All right, what is going on guys? So a lot of people have been wondering whether or not regrowth farming works in BTD6 the same way that it does in BTD5. Well, short answer, yes. But long answer, well, let me just show you. Let me just hop into sandbox mode over here. So we can press hard, sandbox mode. We're going to do the cubism map just to show you guys. But yeah, I loaded right into sandbox mode. So in BTD5, the way you would normally defend regrowth farming is by placing, first of all, a couple of wizard monkeys at the front over here. And you would upgrade them to Tornado Wizard. But, unfortunately, the wizard monkey does no, no longer has the Tornado upgrade. So where did it go, you ask? Well, the Druid over here took it. So I'm going to place two Druids over here. And one, two. First path, third upgrade, Druid of the Storm. This is the one, this is the one you want to get now. The Tornado upgrade. So it costs about the same amount, $2,000. We're going to put two of these on strong. And just a quick reminder for those of you who don't exactly know how Rigo farming works in BD5. So basically, you would wait for Rigo Rainbows to come in. And then the Tornado Druids in the front over here would Rigo all the balloons, create a mass Rigo storm. And then you would put a bunch of towers at the back that would deal with, you know, all the Rigos and whatnot so that you don't leak any lives. So that the round basically goes on for infinity and then you could use that infinite time to like build snipers and heli pilots to give you cash using their abilities but yeah what you would normally build to defend in btd5 would be this so let me drop this down here get up an mib village and what you would normally do is yes drop an ice tower over here get it up to arctic wind we're just gonna test this first to see um if it exactly, Arctic Wind plus MIB would be able to defend infinite regrow balloons over here. So, let me just set the round over here to 42. That's the nice thing about this sandbox mode in BTD. BTD6. So, you can set it to whatever round you want just to test it to see if your defense can defend. But yeah, round 42, that's the round where the first regrow rainbow balloons come in. So, let me just play this. Put it on fast forward and see whether or not the Ice Tower plus MIB can defend. Let's just wait. Yep, druids turn in like six regrow rainbows into hundreds and hundreds. And um, yeah, those cam balloons, we can just ignore that. Um, but yeah, does not look like does not look like the Arctic Wind is quite the same in this game. Yeah, it's just causing a mass regrow storm right now. So let's just remove all these balloons over here um so now that we know that doesn't work you might be wondering what exactly do we have to do to defend infinite balloons now well let me show you an efficient way I've been looking around in sandbox mode trying to find the cheapest way you can um, create a regrow farm with the cheapest defenses so you have to spend at least four thousand dollars on these two druids over here each so we got about 7.5k to 8k invested in these so what i'm about to show you right now is the thought process behind you know trying to figure out what can pop infinite balloons so let me just drag a village over here i'm gonna get a jungle drums so this is what i thought about first it's a very expensive defense but it pretty much works so i'm getting a sun sun avatar over here let's play round 42 yeah, I know. Very, very practical, guys. Affording a uh, $30,000 tower by round 42. <laughs> I'm sure this will be very useful. Um, you can ignore those camo balloons. Should be a big deal. But this sun avatar over here should be able to defend basically infinite regrows over here. Let's just keep on waiting. Because it's uh, $23,000 gives you not infinite problem power, but quite a bit. Yeah, just, look, just watch over here. Just watch. Taking down the regrow balloons pretty much with ease. So I think you get the point. But as you can also see, um, we're not getting any money from these regrow balloons. So what you have to do is the same thing as you had to do in BTD5. You would have to get up like snipers and heli pilots to give you income. And that's and that's the way you would be able to uh, get infinite money. Anyways, I think you get the point. Remove all that. So that's about... Mm, 30,000 plus 3,000 
about forty thousand dollars worth of defenses over there, which is a little bit too expensive to afford by round forty-two. Granted, you could rego farm at a later round, but let me show you a another defense that I was trying. Let's see, I'm gonna get another village over here. Yet again, get it to MIB. And we are going to... Oh, no, I didn't want to press that. I'm trying to drag this up here. Instead, we are going to use rec Recursive Cluster Bombs. With MIB, this should be able to, like, pop basically everything. Because, you know, it doesn't have that Black Balloon slash Zebra Balloon weakness anymore. I'm going to get three of these up. And this should be much, much cheaper than a Sun Avatar by itself. So, let me just play round 42 again. Come on. There we go. So, yeah. $4,000 you could sell for. So, you have to remember that BT6 has a 70% sell price. So, we got um, $5,000, $15,000 plus another $10,000. About $25,000 about $5, cheaper than the Super Monkey. Also, uh, that was kind of a fail there. For some reason, it stopped Rego farming. Maybe I should put my recursive bombs a lot further behind. Sorry about that. Let me try again. Hopefully, it should work this time. Come on. Come on, start up that Rego farm. Because generally, you use two wizards um, to start a Rego farm in BTD5. And two druids over here does look like it is doing the job perfectly. Alright, there we go. Now we got our Rego farm working. But yeah, three recursive cluster bombs can basically handle all these balloons. I'm not quite sure if there's like a tower that can pop infinite balloons anymore. So like, you know, we had the ice shards and we had the arctic wind back in BD5, but those no longer work. Those options don't work anymore. So we have to go with like recursive cluster bombs, which, or sun, av sun avatars, which has a lot of popping power, but not infinite. But this is the cheapest way I can see it defending. But, is there a cheaper way? Oh, let me show you. Sell, sell, sell. Now, what I'm about to do is going to be pretty weird. But let me just place it down first, and then I'll explain. So. Down here. Over here. And over here. I'm going to drop a tax shoot over here, get it up to a ring of fire, let's get extra range on that as well, and then one recursive cluster bomb back here, so this is a much, much, much cheaper defense, and I will show you why, I will explain why this works as I start this regrow farm, alright, let's just wait a little bit just for the regrows to start, you know, regrowing. I put these guys on... Uh, I'll put these guys on last, actually. That's, that's probably better. Yeah, put it on last so that, like, you know, it hits these regrow balloons and then that keeps regrowing and whatnot. But yes, it's pretty much... Uh, these rounds are pretty much going infinite at this point. So yeah, let me explain why this defense works. So these villages over here, the 010 village, this grow blocker upgrade over here prevents regrow balloons from working while in the radius of the village. So the reason why this works is that if you put it over here, and you put it along the track over here, you can make it so that um, the Rego farm is not quite as OP, for lack of a better word. So yeah, so yeah basically, since you're stopping the Rego blooms from like from regrowing like af after this point around the like the first little triangle over here, past the second triangle, if you want to be if you want to make extra sure that like these balloons don't regrow out of control, you could, you know, you could place more O1 villages over here just to collect the, or just to like block out every range past past this druid's path. So yeah, and the reason why I chose Ring of Fire plus Recursive over here is so that the Ring of Fire over here can pop like the zebra and black balloons. It actually has a lot more popping power than it does in BTD5. I've noticed. It's also a lot more expensive but only a couple thousand dollars more expensive. And then a recursive cluster bomb just for like group popping power. But yeah, let's just do the math real quick. 
So this is a little over five thousand dollars. This is like six thousand, so we got eleven thousand in the bank. Um, and three more villages over here, costing about two thousand dollars each. So that's about seventeen thousand dollars worth of defenses. Much much cheaper than the twenty five plus k that I tried with the first two. Tried with the first two methods. But yeah, now that we got our perfect regrow farm set up, let's try to make some money, shall we? So there's a couple ways to go about this. I'm just going to show you first income generating methods. So the alchemist monkey has an upgrade on the very very right side path. Acid pool, faster throwing, lead to gold. There's no lead balloons here, but rubble to rubber to gold over here. Converts all balloons partially into gold, getting more cash per pop. Let's see if this works. So just watch the money counter over there. It's 41149 it ends with. But yeah, it looks like it's not working. So it looks like the Alchemist Monkey does not gain money from popping, you know, balloons that were created from a Regal farm. So we can throw that out the window. Farms obviously don't work because they're round based. Um, Buccaneers have Merchantmen. Let me just place one down, all the way down here. Yep, generates lots of money per round, so that's kind of useless. So I think we have to stick with um, the original the original upgrades over here. So, Sniper Monkey. Let me just place the Sniper Monkey all the way in this corner over here. Put it on first. We're going to get it up to a, uh, a supply drop. And yeah, since we have to wait 25% um, for the cooldown... We're gonna have to wait that that amount. But yeah, let me just drag a couple of supply drops over here. One, two, three, four. So the supply drop, if you don't know, it is not round based, it is time based. And since the rounds are infinite, yes, that does mean infinite money. If you have the patience to like do this for an hour straight. I know I don't have the patience, but but if you really, really, really want infinite money, then yeah, that is the way to do it. So drop another one down. We got three going on right now. So unfortunately, there's no more village upgrade that decreases like the cooldown for the supply drops. So there's really no way you can do this any faster other than continue spamming, spamming abilities and whatnot. Also, it seems like you have to manually collect like the crates from the sniper over here. Unless, of course, the farmer picks them up, the power, but I don't think I can try that in sandbox mode. I might have to jump into a real game and show you guys. But yeah, it just keeps going on and on and on and on and on. Drop another sniper supply drop down. I think it gives about the same money as it does in, like, BTD5, so you don't have to worry about that. There's also a fifth tier upgrade over here, the Elite Sniper. Supply drop gives even more cash. So let's use that right now. Um, yeah, this black crate over here gives me $2,400. Quite an upgrade from like 888 over there. But you, you can only get one of these to fifth tier. So the rest you're going to have to, you know, upgrade to supply drop as normal. And yes, the other option is of course the heli pilot. Let me just drop it all the way in the corner over here. Support Chinook. Patrol point, let's just do it away from the track so that it doesn't mess with the Brico farm. But yeah, this is another way you can get more money. Or even lives, if that's what you want as well. It's um, The Chinook is less efficient than the Supply Drop at giving you money because, you know, it's the same thing as in BTD5. It alternates between giving you lives and then giving you cash. But in case you wanted to also get infinite infinite lives, then yes, this is the way to go. But yeah, this is basically the way you go about doing the Rigo farm in BTD6. As you can tell, it does work. I am getting I am getting money from these drops, and it's adding to my total. So again, you can do this basically any round that has Rigo rainbows. So I don't quite remember off the top of my head, but there's definitely rounds that have Rigo rainbows. I think round 51 has them, so if you want to try a Rigo farm on that round, if you can't get this defense up by round 42, then you can do that. But yeah, I think that is about all I have to show you. The only issue, again, is that um, you can't really AFK do this. So if you're Reaper farming and you want to collect cash, you kind of have to tap the abilities. And you kind of have to pick up the crates as well. 
But in the event that you are playing on like a Android emulator, so like BlueStacks, or if you're syncing your phone screen to um, your PC and you, you can control your phone screen from there, then you might be wondering, is there a way to like um, automate picking up the crates? Cause like, you know, you can just auto click like the abilities whenever they're ready. But is there a way to do it without, you know, having to click the crates? Let's see if the monkey farmer does that. So, let me just show you guys in a real game. Alright, so here we are onto a real game. So I'm gonna sell these farms over here, build a couple supply drop snipers. Cause from what I can tell, the supply drops drop within the range of where the sniper is built. So let's just get a couple over here. Um, sell that. And then just play the round. We don't have to create a Reaper farm. We just want to see whether or not like the banana farm or the monkey farmer automatically collects the crates. So we just have to wait a little bit more for um, the cooldown to run out over here. The round also timed out. Very, very short round 90 over there. But yeah, slow down. Drop all the Slovak crates down, and let's see if the Monkey Farmer automatically collects it. Yes, indeed it does, alright. So in case you were wondering, yes, if you are play- if you do have- somehow have an auto-clicker, then yes, you can automate this. You can go over AFK for like a couple hours or so, just drop farmers all over the map, spam the entire map with like sniper monkeys, and then you are pretty much set after you have your auto-clicker on the supply drop button. Yes, yeah, so that is how to regrow farm in BT6, guys. In case you were wondering, yes, it still works. Just works a little bit differently. Now that you don't have any more cheap ways to get, you know, infinite popping power. Again, that's gonna do it for me. Make sure to like and sub for more BT6 content in the future. I will see you guys next time.